Hey everyone, welcome to the Escape Pod. I am Sal. I'm Josiah. And I'm Nathan. So we all just saw the um the Red Band Game of Thrones season six trailer, and we thought we haven't really talked about Game of Thrones in depth on the on the show yet. I wonder why. <laughs> Not well, for lack of trying. Yeah, no, I think every time we have either the internet's been shit or something has happened or it just hasn't been uploaded. And that's why we're we're both recording so that that doesn't oh, happen. That's good. That's good. So if you haven't seen the trailer yet, here it is. He's gone. World was on fire. No one could save me, but we're the only ones who matter. And everything they've taken from us, we're going to take back and more. Strange what desire will make foolish people do. The great victory I saw in the flames. All of it was a lie. What a wicked game you play. Make me feel this way. What a wicked thing to do. Every one of us is poor and powerless. Yet we can overthrow an empire. You're in the great game now. And the great game is terrifying. Order your man to step aside or there will be violence. I choose violence. of a fighter. Apologies for what you're about to see. That was the trailer. Wasn't that a spectacle to behold? That 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 that, that sure was some Game of Thrones. Yeah, HBO, <laughs> don't take there. this down. We like you. Yeah. Yeah. Give them money. Yeah. Uh, yes. Now that we've set their cock yeah. enough, hopefully they won't be douches to us. So, a lot of things went on in that trailer, and I I know that a lot of the events of the, of the next season are going to be going beyond the books, and I also know that some of it's going to be very much set in the books, like in the events that we've already seen, because I know they skipped a lot of the Greyjoy stuff. But, like, the shows are pretty much lately all, but forgotten about the great joys and so have i to some degree because <laughs> yeah just... Se- season two season two was the last time they had a they had a presence really yeah and then nothing Maybe for season three yeah. forever but um so they're gonna very much be showing them but they're also going to be going beyond the book with a lot of storylines um so we're, we're not going to try to spoil too much from the books about uh, what's going to y- happen yes we won't we won't try yeah, yeah. Like, cause I have, I'm, I'm in the middle of book three, but I, I know stuff that's gonna happen because. And, and yeah. I finished reading to book five like a few months ago, so I don't I have like it. precise details in my mind. Yeah, but I, I think... finished reading book five like last year, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just a slow reader. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I was gonna say I am too, but then I was like, wait, I finished, so that that doesn't help anything. So I have I, I took some notes, and the way my notes worked was I went through like certain um, time slots on the trailer. Yeah. Oh, and, you, uh, oh precise just, motherfucker. Just to order myself. So um, yeah. I don't know much about the character, but we should just start with the Greyjoys, I think, because okay. I know how much oh, you guys sure. fucking love the Greyjoys. Dude, I fucking adore the Greyjoys. In fact, I remember a lot of I think. I'll let you go next, Nathan, but um, I remember when people, there's a lot of people in the community of A Song of Ice and Fire who don't really like A Feast for Crows because they it, they had to wait even longer to get back to some of the characters like Tyrion and uh, Daenerys and Jon's in like two chapters, but you know. Uh, but I actually really loved A Feast for Crows because you get to see a bunch of new characters and those uh, new, those new characters, a lot of them were from Dorne and a lot of them were Greyjoys. And the Greyjoy stuff is just, it's so great. Like, I, I don't even know how to describe it. And uh, am I correct in saying that at one minute and nine seconds, the guy who's being, like, 
down to the water was Irion Greyjoy. Oh, no, that is that that is uh okay, according to my source, that is confirmed Euron being anointed in salt water by a drowned man. Um so he, that's no spoilers, but Euron his ascension is is coming. Oh damn. See, I I I watched that at normal speed and so my mind just went, "Oh, it's like Theon or something." No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, I, I did too, but that's why I watched the trailer five times slowed down. So good casting, yeah. I guess, if we thought it was Theon. Oh yeah, the main because uh, because um it's very misleading because the shot before it is Theon. Yeah. So you yeah, think exactly. that yeah. it's the same character, but no, there's two shots with um Aron. There's him being dunked, and there's him like un taking off his hood in on like a bridge in the rain. Oh well, I I mean that's like a spoiler right there, but I don't know. I I won't say anything. It's not a spoiler <laughs> oh, okay. if you don't spoil it. <laughs> uh, well, according yes. to uh according according to uh, Game of Thrones wiki, it is pronounced Euron. So Euron? It, it is Euron. Okay. Yes. For any, yeah. Cool. I'm glad I got that nailed down. <laughs> and and basically the way I describe the character, at least in the books, is he's basically an anime character. Like, and what I mean by that is that he's so, like, he's just so genius and so, like, full of swagger, and he has a fucking eye patch, and his eye is, like, maybe magical, it's hard to tell, like, and the way he just acts around everyone, it's like, dude, did you, did, did you fucking walk out of an anime? Like, some of the things that he does and says, it's like, yeah, he's basically an anime character. I don't know if the show's gonna be like that, because it's, it's not, it doesn't embrace a few of the like Dario. Well, yeah, Dario's nowhere near as flamboyant as his book counterpart. I like Dario. I don't know. The first one? Yeah. yeah. No. No. <laughs> Mm-mm. You stop that. What what's his name? Uh, uh, <laughs> who fucking well, cares? Go go watch our Deadpool trailer or review whatever. So yeah, there's a lot of shots with uh, the Greyjoys. I think there's one where they're all kind of standing by a cliff. And there's a white-haired figure. I think that's um the guy from season two. Uh, what what's his name? That's what um, I've heard. Aaron Greyjoy, yeah. So yeah, Greyjoy uh, is pirates basically. Yeah, yeah. They're they're like they're like super Viking pirates. Yeah, it's, they look um, very organized. Oh yeah, they're they're. I no, no spoilers, but given where the books are going, the Greyjoys are probably going to be one of the final factions, basically. Um, I hope so. That's all I'll say, is that if they, if, after what happens in the in the most recent two books, if the Greyjoys aren't headed for something big, I will be supremely disappointed, because the buildup is enormous. I'm really excited for the Greyjoys. I love this, the, the, the culture, like the brief glimpses that I've, that I've been able to see. I love the characters. They seem just amazing. I've heard tales of, of uh, Uran, and what he's done. It's also nice to just be having new characters. I love new characters because they're always great, like for the most part, like in their own special way. I am interested to see what happens with Daenerys because her okay, she's at like Vos Dothrak, right? Yeah, she, yeah, she's yeah, she's taken by the by the Dothraki. Her her story in the show was actually more or less intact with the book, other than just her character seems like really like I think they were trying to play up her possibly being insane because you know uh, Targaryens have that issue of either being brilliant or insane, so. I think yeah. she wasn't especially likable, but her story was like the book, so that was cool. Yes. At um, 108, there's apparently, I forget where Danny was staying before she got taken. Um, was it Marine? Or... Yeah, it was still Marine, yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's a shot of her little office area in Marine getting blown the fuck up. That was so weird. I was like, what the shit happened there? Yeah, like, it's so, like, wait. Well, because, you know, for the most part of the trailer, you see that, you know, Daenerys is being taken by the Vos Dothrak to there you go, yeah. call, I forget his name, but he's actually mentioned in, like, the first book in, like, one yeah. paragraph. Oh, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Moro or something? I don't fucking know. He was one of the um the people who basically took over a part of the uh, the Kalasar after Drogo died. And now yeah. he's sort of become top dog. So As you do. And then there's, you know, Grayscale, Jorah, and Dario trying to find Daenerys. And then there's Tyrion who's wandering somewhere, somewhere with a torch, and it's like I'm guess I'm guessing it's Marine. He's probably looking for some shady shit. Or some I wonder I want I wonder if he's gonna do a bunch of drinking and have sex with women. That's his no. character, right? No, he's not gonna have sex. Unless oh. it's with Taisha. 
Um, yes. Well, yeah. I, I don't. I, ironically, I think Tyrion's probably gonna have the least sex of anybody in the upcoming seasons. Oh, I, I mean, I'm sure he can't have less sex than Theon. Oh, no. Oh. Yes, yes, you're right. Oh, too soon. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, too soon. Those season three. I, 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 I like how you went to Theon and not Varys because Theon was more of a, a sore spot. Yeah. <laughs> I like how you went to Theon and not Jorah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, he'll have. Yeah. No. Well, okay. I was gonna make a crude joke about grayscale spreading through, um, <laughs> through that. But, but there is. I mean, no spoilers. But there is in the Dance of Dragons. There is a certain type of plague that's not grayscale that starts up. So I'm wondering mm-hmm. if grayscale is going to be a di- like kind of a, a stand-in for that, where it's a, a oh, new plague. Which I'm kind of okay with. But yeah, it could be cool. I mean. Like yeah, I think grayscale is an interesting disease, and it like I love, I love old Valeria, so I like how they're having that connection kind of come back because old I, Valeria has always kind of been in the background. I wonder if there's going to be an army of ice people versus an army of stone people, and then <laughs> it could be cool. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Yeah. Can a stone person become a whited or no? Maybe uh, I don't know. It's magic. Let's move down to King's Landing, where Click Game Bowl is happening. Yes, I, yeah, I, they got Franken Mountain. Is uh, it's confirmed? In it is I confirmed. Mean, no, it's confirmed up until both of them are permanently dead. Click Game Bowl could still happen. <laughs> I just I love that bit where she's it's like, eternal. I, I choose violence, and it's, I'm like, I choose Click Game Bowl. I see. Honestly, yeah, like, yeah. Honestly, for me, Cersei Lannister was just like really obnoxious to me in this trailer. Like every scene, I was sort of just like, "I don't." You seem like off. Like not like character wise, because obviously she's an unlovable bitch. But I mean, just like I don't know, or just I, her performance was just really weird to me, and I was like, eh. I, "Am I am I, mean, I right in I know assuming talking... that Tommen and Cersei are gonna go head to head?" That's definitely what it looked like. Well, there's yeah, there's a shot where he goes towards the camera, and then it's counterpointed by the shot with her and. And uh, Robert Strong. Kyburn yes. is behind um, her. Yeah, well, Kyburn has still a part to play. And the books, in the books, there's a bunch of interesting theories about Kyburn and what he wants. But in the show, I have no idea. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but to attest to what you said, Nathan, about Cersei Lannister, it's not that I feel the same way as you, but I think what you're feeling and it's, well, I mean, I did find some, talking to you guys, I did find some things that actually kind of excited me. But re- regardless, I think my initial opinion of the trailer was it looks pretty much the same as the season five trailer. Yeah. With, like, you know, with, with obviously the, uh, it's not, with, with, but... With the, with the cover of a song and it being kind of somber. Yeah, seriously. Everyone yeah, is and fucking then, depressed you know, in this, except for the High Sparrow. The High Sparrow is just like, we can do great things. And everyone's just like, my life is shit. <laughs> No, except for Peter Baelish, who just stood in the woods, like, like <laughs> cackling like a fucking maniac. Yeah, uh, I'm so glad Littlefinger did not die last season, because I thought he was going to, and I was really worried. If anyone wants context, when they said that Sansa was going to have a traumatic scene, I was like, is Baelish going to, like, try to fuck her, and then she just, like, stabs his throat and, like, rips it open or something? And that's, like, I don't know why, but that's an image I had in my head. And they're like, a beloved character is going to die. And I'm like, oh, don't kill Littlefinger. He's barely begun. And then it turned out to be... Who did die? Because we all knew John was going to die. I mean, or I at least did. I did. Well, I mean, I think, the, I think uh, what threw me off was when uh, George R.R. Martin was like, hey shows different they're gonna they might they might end up killing a character that doesn't get killed in the books and that for me was when i was like oh shit bye bye little finger that's that's unfortunate i but think i read somewhere like, where they said that 15 characters have died in the show that have not died in the books so i'm sure this is a red herring but i thought it was interesting how they showed a shot of sansa while Tyrion was speaking so it was like weird. They, like she's clearly in a different place because Tyrion is still across the sea and she was yeah. in Winterfell. well they have the but... sparrow speaking over uh daenerys so yeah ah, that's true that's they, they, did, they did the same thing in um well in season the season five trailer they did this interesting balance between hype sparrow saying strip away the gold knock down the statues and this is what remains. And then oh, Daenerys was saying, 
I'm gonna break the wheel. So Daenerys oh, right. and the High Sparrow are gonna join forces. That's oh my, my God. Theory. I hope so. It might happen. Um, I I brought this up, but I think it's funny how the High Sparrow is like the only person who's not like fucking miserable. Like he has this really inspirational line where it's like, you know, together we can move mountains and shit. And it's like, ah, oh, I almost forgot that you're like the head of a weird ISIS analog analogy. Um, yeah, yeah, that, that was, that was wasn't how it wasn't how it was in the books. That's for sure. Oh, exactly. <laughs> uh, followed by oh, no one cares. Lance with his fucking symbol on his fucking head being yeah, like, hey, I, I'm well, in a cult. I, yeah, um, I just gotta say, I mean, not to not to derail, but I remember, derail that that. Mo- I, I remember that moment in season five when they were carving the symbols, and I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Doesn't matter, but it's still, still cool. Cool is the word for it. I thought it was silly. but it hurts. It's, I, I will always support social commentary and really obvious analogies to ISIS. I mean, who wouldn't? Let's be honest. <laughs> Um, also, anyway, I think we should call him Hype Sparrow because because he's he's building the hype. God right? damn it, you're the uh, worst person. I, like I said, the scene with Cersei was really throwing me off. I'm kind of like done with her and 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 Jamie. <laughs> like, I mean, you know, you're supposed to be like kind of done with it throughout because you know, brother sister. Eh. But I was like, like honestly, I'm just disappointed in Jamie. And I'm really curious how they how they're carrying on after Jamie effectively got their daughter killed end of last season so oh, yeah but, appa- but apparently they overlooked that as i did because i forgot about that there's also a scene where um someone thought it might be cold cold hands but mm, if, really i mean well i mean considering okay so let's talk about Bran. Bran was absent last season, and from what they said was okay. They recasted the Three-Eyed Raven. Yes, it's Max, Max von Sydow, but still they recasted him <laughs> because Game of Thrones is really—I won't say good because that would imply a compliment. They—they they do that a lot. They basically said that he was being trained off-screen by the Three-Eyed Raven, and in the books, in A Dance with Dragons, you get to see the training. But given what this trailer is showing us, where it's visions and brands looks different, and he's standing up, clearly he's in a vision. He's not actually standing. Yes. Um, but he has visions of the knights. It's it, is it Night King or Knights King? I know in the books it's Knights King, but in I think the it's show Knights it's, King. He he sees him, and you know you can tell that he's you know uh, getting shown things and sees prophecies and and visions. Yes. So honestly, I think they're just gonna have his like the end of his training. But if they want to use Bran more in, and like have action scenes in Bran's storyline, they could bring in Cold Hands. And Cold Hands is a character who actually showed up in the third book. Um, so he, <laughs> he, he shows up in the third book, um, and then he's in uh, A Dance of Dragons as well. He basically, um, there's a bunch of scenes in the show where he would have been, like when the crows go after Sam and Gilly. In that scene, it, it's Cold Hands, and he's like, fighting off whites with his crows. And and Cold Hands is this mysterious character who apparently serves um, the three-eyed raven, but he's like a sentient white because his eyes aren't uh, blue. He actually wears the cl- he wears this shroud. He, he wears a Night's Watch cloak and his hands, he's called Cold Hands because his hands, he's been dead so long, his hands are black. He, he saves Sam and Gilly and then he leads Bran, Hodor, Mira, and Jojen to the three-eyed raven and he fights off whites. He also cannot pass through the wall. So whatever magic is keeping him sentient and out of the White Walker's control, probably the Three-Eyed Raven, it cannot pass through the wall either because the wall has magic in it and it's warded, which is why the White Walkers can just use whites to go through the wall, which is why they're, you know, you you can't win either way, you know, (laughs) because something's going to get through. Cold Hands, he's just around, and he's basically has stayed in Bran's story until the end of the most recent book. So if they want to just introduce him in this season, it could it could happen. You know, it's still something that could happen. With Bran, I read a thing. I forget. Um, I think it was either said that Bran this season's gonna be a lot like a Luke Skywalker in Return of the Jedi. Oh, <laughs> I can see okay. it. Yeah. yeah. And- yeah, I think that'd be really cool. Bran's just like got his shit together. He's honed in. I assume he's basically just like a wizard at this point. Mm-hmm. I'm, yeah, I'm cool with that. I'm just cool with just Bran coming back and just owning bitches. Like, suck it, motherfuckers. <laughs> he, he's just got telekinesis. Oh my he, god. He, <laughs> if he, if he, no, he, he, he uses telekinesis to make his legs move, so now he can like walk around yeah. and he's fine.
so yeah, first shot was just like, oh yes, Jon Snow. He is he is definitely dead. He's he's not alive. He is not coming back. That we way. said he's gone. That means Jon Snow. I love how, tr- so, how hard they tried. It you know good effort, but po- make your, your first mistake for one was probably like announcing that Kit Harrington was coming back. Um, your second mistake was having the poster with Jon Snow looking, you know, yes, bloody, but not necessarily dead. And then. All the leaked set photos of him obviously still there. The the one thing they had, like, the one news article they had going for them was just like, oh man, Kit Harrington cut his hair, that means he doesn't need his Jon Snow hair anymore, and it's like, well, I mean, he, he, he got a slight haircut, like, months before filming began, it'll grow back, but sure, let's just say he's not coming back to be for fun. I was actually really intrigued when I saw the Melisandre being like, oh, everything, like, I forget exactly what she said, but when she's just like, I done fucked up, I was like, oh, this is an interesting character moment, because mm-hmm. she's like, she's never met with failure. This is, this and is a first for her. This The best part about that as well is that she's confessing to Davos, who has, yeah. throughout the all the books, basically kept trying to kill her and hated her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. In- so it's interesting to see that, uh, you know, I'm sure that ultimately ends up with her going and doing some resurrection on Jon Snow and shit. And then, you know, it starts speeding up and it's like, oh, there's battles in the north with people. And I forget what they fucking call them. Wildlings. Wildlings, um, yes. And, yeah, uh, it's, you know, it's, things it's, happening. It's, it's the Boltons and the Wildlings are fighting. Yeah, yeah that's what so. it looks like. And then, you know, just once you hit like, I don't know, ex- I didn't, I didn't put a time mark but don't worry towards the end of the towards the end of the trailer for all of you uh pubescent boys or you men that are horribly single don't worry melisandre is reassuring you there will be continue to be sex in this season and we'll He's... actually get a bit of some like lesbian sex scene it's like oh yeah. getting like hey letting you know it is okay to jerk off to this show we <laughs> An ending scene with Davos, and I love Davos, so good to, um, good to see him. I like how I, I, when ta- when talking about the lesbian scene, you went to the male audience for enjoying it, as if the lesbians won't be yeah. like, "Damn right." Well, I don't, I don't know what they. I just said jerking off, like that's just yeah, my word for masturbation. Well, I don't know what yeah. the word is for female masturbation. It, it's what, what I was what I was saying is uh, funny enough. Uh, of all my criticism of Game of Thrones unnecessary sex scenes. The one that Melisandre had, well, it wasn't a sex scene, but the scene where she tries to seduce John in season five, that's actually one of the scenes I actually liked. Um, cause yeah. It was, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I like that, too. Because it was a good, I thought it was a good moment for their characters. What? Um, I hated that scene. I know, right? You'd be like, it's the one scene they should have cut. Um, yeah, right? God, <laughs> I, yeah, awful. So I, I will say that. So <laughs> as, as much as I criticize, I, you know, it's context. I Fucking will wait purist. for context. No, there's sex scenes in the book, but purist. I'm, I'm not a purist, but okay. <laughs> but um, I will wait for context. Like I said, I'm, I'm, this is just my reactions to a trailer. For all I know, season six is going to be the best season of all time. I don't know if it will be, but that's because that's how life is. You never know, really. I have mm-hmm. theories about what's going to happen up in the wall because... So, so of course, our main um, point of view character in the wall is now Davos. Yeah, my, yes. My theory is that, you know, Melisandre is going to realize that, you know, in the trailer half, she was like, oh, I fucked up. Stannis was not the one. You know, that was a mistake. Yeah. And he wasn't. He wasn't. He was not a Zora High reborn. No, unfortunately. You know, as, as awesome as that would be. Yeah. I think what's going to happen is she and Davos are going to realize that the Night's Watch is fucked up. And that Jon Snow actually might have been a Zora High Reborn. Yes. So there's a shot. It's the last shot of the trailer that really interests me because there's conflicting messages happening. So Davos picks up Ironclaw. He's he's over Jon's dead body, and Jon is resting, I think, on Ghost. And there's all these um brothers in the nice watch in the room with him. And he says, I'm very sorry about this, I'm not very good at fighting. And then pulls out and unsheathes Ironclaw, and then it cuts. And at first I was like, oh, is he going to like chop off, chop up John's body? Like I was very confused. Jesus. And, and then if you pause it though, the other brothers are pulling out their blades. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm thinking what's going to happen is this is when Davos stages his rescue of John's body so that yeah. Alessandra can do the breathing yeah. down the throat thing to him. 
Yeah, I think that's what's yeah. gonna, I feel like that I feel like that's what's going to happen. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. I can't see it really happening any other way. Like basically she says, "Hey Davos, you know what I thought Stannis was? That's who John is and I can bring him back, but the longer he's dead, you know, the more parts of him will be missing. So mm-hmm. we gotta gotta bring him back, gotta bring him back right now. So And that's why there's also that one shot, I think at around one minute, one second, where the Black Brothers are bashing down the door. That's gonna come into play around this scene as well, yeah. I think. Davos is like, Well, the Night's Watch is fucked up, John was a bro. You know what? I don't care if he's a Zora High or not, let's bring him back. And then they do. Yeah. And then he becomes um, John Stark. Then his, yeah. his and watch since he died, ended. he's no longer bound to the Night's Watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, his watch has ended. Yeah. Which is the best thing. Yeah, around. exactly. I think we're pretty much done with Game of Thrones. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but done. they keep making seasons. Oh, <laughs> I'm just joking. Wow, that I was did. a low. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, hey, a low hey, hey, hey. If, and petty if I'm too positive, if I'm too positive and happy in this review, it's going to be so drastically different than what i might say later i i would just want to prepare people so it's just know. my job e, y- yes <laughs> no hey like i said i i'm not gonna go in like wanting to hate it i'm gonna give credit where credit is due i'm just saying that i'm i'm saying it right now i mean like and like like i've said i am going in pessimistic but i i am i am trying to be not venomous about yes. it yes and i'm we, going we will... in wanting to see echo excellence and I'm probably gonna love it as I did with yeah. all the other seasons because mm-hmm. I'm a whore. <laughs> so thank you all for joining us. I don't know how long this is actually going to be when I cut it the fuck down, but I hope you all are enjoying the new way the show is being run and it's fun. <laughs> if you want, yeah, yay. and wine.